Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to utilize the Parkitect track editing system for roller coasters, as well as methods to help mitigate uh, some of the issues players are experiencing with reconnecting the track to the station platform. For this example, I'm going to utilize the Floorless roller coaster. One thing that I like to do when building roller coasters is set the station platforms to an elevation level of 4. This allows me to construct a station building around it at a realistic height, as well as giving me additional legroom when reconnecting the track at the end. So with this in mind, I'm going to go ahead and make my station length of 5 tiles, and begin construction on the lift hill. I'm going to set this to about a height of 13. Here we are. I'm going to crest that there. So the first piece of advice that I can give you is the inclines, both inclines up and inclines down. In previous theme park games, uh, we're used to all the pieces kind of leading to the same spot. Whether you're using the vertical drop, the steep incline, or the half incline, all of it leads up to the same measurements. With Parkitect, that is not exactly the case. Uh, with the way the coaster editor is designed, it's designed to be as flexible as possible. Uh, but with that, it still has that puzzle piece building uh, philosophy, which can cause issues to players whenever they're not vigilant on where their track essentially is heading. So in this example, I'm going to show you how I'm going to use the four steep piece right here. So the four slope down piece, I'm going to go ahead and begin my drop, and I'm going to flatten it. Now, take note how at the end of the track, it shows you a number. This is the height that you want to be watching out for. So with this piece specifically, it's always going to be consistent with itself. So we go from 7 to 6, 5, 4, and 3. So I'm going to go ahead and set this down and show you the differences with the other height pieces. I'm going to put this at a length of 2. So with the quarter slope up, as the name implies, this makes the track go in a uh, quarter integer. So you got three and a quarter, but if I make it longer, I'm now at three and three eighths, three and a half. This length right over here, I can't make that out. I think that says three and five eighths, I believe. Um, but as you can see, the integers for this are a lot more different than when utilizing the four slope up. So let's say if I go to back to 4 slope up, I go to 9, 10, 11, 12. What I'm going to do next is show you how the half slope up works. So this one right here, if you set it to just one tile, it goes up by quarters. So 3 and a quarter, 3 and a half, 3 and 3 quarters, 4, 4 and a quarter, four and a half and etc so the longer that it goes uh the longer the multiplier gets for uh the height so now that you know that this is something that's very important to keep in mind when constructing your rides the reason for that is is that the closer that you get to this endpoint right over here you want to be as close as possible to this integer so like let's say if i get my coaster to right over here in this area i want to make sure that whatever i'm doing I'm making sure that I'm inching closer and closer to get back to a whole number integer and then utilizing the appropriate pieces to ensure that I can make it back to the station. That's usually where a lot of the issues occur is that uh, players will be utilizing those quarter slopes, the half slopes, and the full slopes, and your measurements are kind of all over the place. Now, uh, just like a stream, all streams lead to the ocean. All pieces will eventually lead you to where you need to be. So the game doesn't essentially lead you astray. It just unfortunately becomes a part of uh, just measurements. It's just not going to measure up to connect the way it's supposed to. So that's why it's very important that you keep that in mind. So now with that boring stuff out of the way, I'm going to go back here and construct a loop. I'm going to make this at a height of 3. And next up, I'm going to make an airtime hill. I'm going to use a different slope, the one slope up. And there's two ways that you can make airtime hills. You can either give them a flat crest, use the same slope to go back down, or to save space, you can go from a flat to the actual uh, inverse height. So for here, you're going from up to down. So as you can see, it kind of creates a 
sharper incline. So this is better for whenever you're building hyper coasters and stuff of that nature. So I'm going to go with that. And as you can see, I'm still continuing uh, the same height trend of keeping to a whole number, even though I'm using a different incline. I'm going to build a cobra roll. So I'm going to go left, uh, make this a length of three. Make the half corkscrews shorter than that. Make the half loop three, make it left, and have a nice tight cobra roll. Awesome. So the next step, uh, next thing I'm going to make is a zero G roll. For those of you who aren't aware, you can make a full roll uh, within Parkitect by having the length of four or higher. So if you have anything less than that, it's going to go by quarters. So say if I'm at a length of three, I can only do a rotation up to 90 degrees. If I have it at a length of four, I can do a full 360. So in this instance that I want to do a zero G roll, I'm going to do the opposite incline. I'm going to make it five. Usually the wider that you can make it, the smoother that it'll look. Uh, so I'm going to make it a length of five. And there's my zero G roll. I'm going to flatten it out. And what I will do over here is we'll do an additional loop. I'm not trying to go for the most realistic layout here. I'm just kind of showing you the basics to coaster design and just things that I'm mindful of when I'm building. Another thing that will lead you into trouble is changing heights mid incline. So say that I went from half to one. This could be beneficial if I'm trying to get back to a whole number. So I'm at seven and a half there. Say if I increase this by one, I'm now at a whole number of eight. So that's awesome. But, say if I go to four slope down, and I change it to this quarter. I'm going to go underground here. So you'll see that now, I'm working in the one and a quarter space, versus either half integers or a full integer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the four slope up, so I can get out of the ground. I'm going to flatten it out and now see how no matter the piece that I use I'm out of that full number integer I'm not working with halves and quarters so to get back to it this is where you have to get creative and so like say if I'm going to do the slope down flatten it out take note how if I do one it goes to eight if I do two seven seven eighths three, seven, three quarters, seven, five eighths, seven and a half, seven, three eighths. So you can kind of see here how you have to go nine whole pieces before you make it back to a full number. So since my coaster doesn't even make it up that, I am going to just use the half slope here. So you know what, I'm going to do the one slope up. And let's see what difference this has. So yep, same with this. You can see that I'm unable to get that whole number. I'm just getting those quarters and halves. So I'm just going to go to 7 to a quarter here. I'm going to make my mid-course break run since I'm getting close to the end of the ride. Make that 5 tiles. And I'm going to have my drop. So since now I'm working in a different height space, if I go to three, I no longer am getting the flush flat pieces that I was getting over on this side. So let's say if I do quarter slope down, so see the difference here how I'm now at three. The only problem with doing stuff like this is that you'll see here that the track looks kind of janky um, and it just has this awkward incline here. So we're going to try something else. Let's try something more gradual. Here we go. So here's a more gradual drop. So you can kind of see here, this actually went between three separate inclines and now I'm back at a whole number. So just build some flat spins right over here. 
I don't want these to be too big. Alright, and I'm going to try to get back up to the incline of 4. So I'm going to do... an upward climb for my ride. I'm going to change directions here. So kind of a downward helix essentially. Alright, so happy with how that looks there. So next up Let's bring her on home. And this gives me enough space to do a final break run if I wish. So you can kind of see here how in this ending bit, while it's not elegant whatsoever, um, I was mindful of how the incline was working. So while it took a little bit of trial and error, I was able to make it back to the station without much issue as soon as as soon as you pretty much get this back on a whole number uh, height it's gonna make it so much more easier for you to connect your roller coasters so that's why it's important that as you saw here uh, when I was working with this other incline I was trying to get in uh, try to get it flattened out as much as I could as you get better with the game uh, you're gonna be more mindful of that and your designs will incorporate that um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the other roller coasters that I've worked on in this park, which is hiding right over here. Um, you can kind of see here I had a launched BNM into a dive loop. I use a lot of mods in my game, so you can see here that I'm using the Catwalks mod um, with the station lights. Right here, I've got... It was easy for me to get back to the station. I've got my transfer brake, even though I don't actually have a transfer track. Over here I've got an actual uh, B&M floorless that is fully constructed. So you can see kind of a more elegant ZOG roll here uh, where it goes up into the incline. And kind of like Valraven at Cedar Point, um, at the end of the roll you kind of go towards a curved incline in the other direction. But you can see here that I've got my final brake run, Aero Mine Train, into Mangiga. So, with that said, kind of going back to this roller coaster here, once you get a handle of how those inclines work and you know how to read those numbers as you're building, uh, it's going to make everything much easier, like I mentioned before. Uh, just practice makes perfect. Um, it's definitely it's it's a system that's very familiar, but also very different at the same time. Uh, so once you kind of get that down packed, you'll be building roller coasters like a professional in no time.